Liquid nitrogen is known for its frigid ability to freeze almost anything within a few seconds. Nitrogen is a common, practical element, so let's extract some from the air we breathe. There are 118 elements in the periodic table, each of which has unique properties. Join me as I make as many as possible in the series while exploring the science behind them. Welcome to Wheeler Scientific. In today's video, we are taking a look at the element nitrogen. Nitrogen is a common element. It surrounds us every day. Nitrogen is the seventh most abundant element in our galaxy. The atmosphere consists of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, the rest containing 0.9% argon, and 0.1% other gases. The gaseous form of nitrogen makes up most of the nitrogen found on our planet. Many nitrogen containing compounds are crucial to our survival. Plants need nitrogen to grow. A few essential natural compounds are ammonia. There are several nitrates, such as potassium nitrate, calcium nitrate, sodium nitrate, and nitric acid. All these chemicals can be found in the standard lab. You can purchase nitrogen in pressurized cylinders in a pure form, or you can buy it in liquid form, such as liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen is a beneficial material and makes cold temperatures very easily achievable for a household chemist. Liquid nitrogen comes in at a frigid temperature of negative 195.8 degrees Celsius, or negative 320 freedom units. This makes it great for rapidly cooling down projects or freezing different objects. In a previous video, I made copper metal. I plan to use some of this copper to produce nitrogen. Now, copper can't produce nitrogen by itself, but it can be used to pull it out of the atmosphere. Being that pure nitrogen doesn't react with copper, but oxygen does. Therefore, by creating a sealed vessel, I can react oxygen with the copper, leaving 99% nitrogen and 1% other gases. This produces a relatively pure sample of nitrogen. Now I need to make the vessel capable of withstanding heat, and then being sealed with nitrogen. I would also like it to be at a low pressure to get a discharge going. For this, I'll be using some standard 10 millimeter tubing. First, I'll make a test tube end on one side. Once I have that formed, I'm going to let it cool. Then once cooled, I'm going to make a constriction about 3 inches from the end of the test tube. This section that can hold the copper that's going to react with the oxygen.
Once the construction is cooled, I am then going to add copper into it. Then I'm going to add another constriction. This is where the test tube will be sealed and connected to the vacuum pump. Once the pressure is low enough, the glass tube connected to the pump glows when brought near a Tesla coil. I need to be careful not to pull out too much air, because the pressure will be too low then once all the oxygen is gone. I will then seal the constriction. I once again let this cool until I can touch it, and once that happens, we can begin pulling out all the oxygen. I will slowly start and heat the copper. It is important to note that if I heat too quickly, the glass will soften and pull in due to the negative pressure inside. So I want to keep this a very slow and even heat, so that the copper reacts with the oxygen, which does not melt the glass. After some time, you can see copper oxidizing. This is a good sign. It's pulling out the oxygen and reacting to form copper oxide.
after some heating, most of the oxygen has reacted with the copper. I then again let it cool. Once I can touch it again, I bring it back into the flame, and I can now seal a constriction. This leaves me with a low pressure ampule of nitrogen gas. The ampule turned out quite nicely, and I'm pleasantly surprised with how this project went. Now, copper is not the only thing that you can use for this. There's other elements that you can heat or react to pull out oxygen out of there. You can use like an oxygen absorber or magnesium, anything that forms an oxide when reacted with air to pull out the oxygen. It's a very quick process, and it's a cool demonstration that not all the gases we breathe are, in fact, oxygen. There's a bunch mixed in there that we breathe constantly. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you like this video, drop a like. If you have any comments or questions, post those in the comments section below. If you'd like to join a Discord server with a bunch of like-minded scientific individuals, check out the link in the description to join my Discord server. We talk about a wide variety of topics over there, from nuclear physics to nuclear chemistry to regular old organic chemistry. But then again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again. I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a Jeep, I got that bug and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all.